In this video, I'm going to show you how to up the performance on your Ryzen-based mini PC, handheld, or even laptop. So you can go from running a game like Cyberpunk 2077, like this, under 60, to over 60 FPS. On average, we're actually doing around 72 with this setup here. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, I'm going to show you how to get the most out of your mini PC, your handheld gaming PC, or even a laptop. Mainly, we're going to be focusing on Ryzen APUs with integrated graphics, but this also works with Intel. If you're working with an Intel mini PC with integrated graphics or even a dedicated GPU, you can squeeze a little extra performance out of it. But we're going to see the most gains from a Ryzen APU, from Ryzen 3000 up to 7000. And all of this is really going to come down to thermal design power, otherwise known as thermal design point or TDP. You've probably heard that word thrown around a lot with all of the new handhelds and mini PCs on the market. And TDP really refers to the maximum amount of heat generated by a component, be it a iGPU, a CPU, APU, or even a GPU. But when a lot of us refer to TDP, we're referring to how much wattage we're going to put into the chip. We can actually adjust this using third-party applications. And for instance, AMD designed, let's say, the 6800U around 15 watts to 28 watts. But in all actuality, the Ryzen 6800U can't hit its maximum clocks on the CPU and iGPU at the same time at 28 watts. Definitely needs a little more to get up there. So theoretically, if we up the wattage, it'll reach higher clocks on the CPU and iGPU, in turn offering better performance. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to do that exact thing using a third-party application, but there are a few things to note before we get started. Now, when it comes to these handheld PCs, I'd say most of them could definitely handle around 45 watts. Obviously, when a handheld is pulling more power, it's going to drain battery faster. So in this video, I'm really focusing on these mini PCs. And with this, there's really two things you need to worry about. The cooling system, which, you know, through my experience, I've seen a lot of these can do anywhere from 45 up to 65 watts just fine with the stock cooling system. And the next most important thing is going to be the power supply. So a lot of the newer Ryzen 6000 and 7000 series mini PCs in the market do anywhere from 35 watts up to 65 watts. You can take a look at your power supply right now, and sometimes you get lucky, it'll tell you the wattage right on it. This one happens to be putting out 64 watts, but if it doesn't, there's a very easy equation you can use. Take the voltage that the power supply is putting out and multiply it by the amps that it's putting out, and that'll give you the wattage that that PSU can handle. So with that out of the way, I want to jump right into showing you how to do this directly from within Windows. It's really simple to do. We're going to be using an application known as Universal x86 Tuning Utility. So now that we've kind of evaluated our cooling system and power supply, it's time to up the performance on this thing. And it's actually really easy to do. With these Ryzen APUs, or even an Intel CPU with integrated graphics, TDP is really going to play an important part. This PC is set at 35 watts right now, and I'll give you a quick look. There are tools that I like to use, and I will show you exactly where to get them. So I've got hardware info up and running. This is going to give us our real-time TDP, total system package power of that CPU, rather APU with this system. And CPU-Z is actually just a quick application we can download to run a stress test. This is going to max out all of the cores. As soon as I max it out, you'll see this will jump up to 35 watts. So right now, this PC is set at a 35 watt TDP. And it's great for the CPU. I mean, we can actually still get some great performance out of that. But when you throw in the iGPU, it needs to split that 35 watts up between the two, the iGPU and the CPU, which can lead to poor performance. There's several ways to go about upping the TDP on your mini PC or your handheld gaming PC. But personally, I suggest using Universal x86 Tuning Utility. This is awesome and it has been updated from the older APU Tuning Utility. This works with AMD and Intel. I'll leave a link in the description to the GitHub. Lots of great information over here, and with a lot of the newer handhelds, it actually does have fan control built in. We're going to go over to releases. We're going to get the latest release, the latest stable, version 2.0. Just go ahead and download it here. The next tool I suggest using when kind of tuning these little PCs is hardware info. This gives you all the information you need. You can get the portable version, or you can do the installer. CPU-Z also comes in really handy just to quickly max out that CPU. And when it's time to test out the iGPU, GPU-Z is a really great tool. So I've actually got them all installed right now, as you can see on my desktop. We've got CPU-Z, 
I've got GPU-Z and hardware info. But now we need to install the universal tuning utility. Just go ahead and run the installer. Give you a nice little walkthrough here and it should place it directly on our desktop. And if it doesn't launch the first time, it'll actually give you a little bit of a warning that you need to download Net Framework. It'll also pop a link up and you can head right over there and download it directly from the Microsoft website. But as soon as you start it up, this is what it's gonna look like. We do have an updater. So from settings, we can check for updates. It'll also notify you when you start it up if there's an update available. As you can see from here, we've got a lot to choose from. First being pre-made presets. This should automatically detect your APU or your CPU. Some don't have profiles just yet, but we've got an eco mode, balanced performance, and this one happens to have an extreme mode. Some of them won't show up with the extreme mode. In my opinion, even performance and extreme is a bit mild for some of the uh, newer APUs out there. It kind of keeps it on the more conservative side. So personally, I love the custom section. This is where I do all of my tuning. And from the very top, we've got our APU temperature tuning. Usually you're gonna be at about 95 degrees Celsius. Most manufacturers set it right there, 93, 95. 95 is gonna be fine. And if you hover over this, it'll give you a little explanation. So once this reaches 95 degrees Celsius, it's gonna start limiting the power that can go to that CPU so it doesn't burn it up. 95 degrees Celsius is perfectly fine for these APUs to hit every once in a while. It'll bring it right back down for us. Skin temperature limit. This is great for handheld use case scenarios. APU tuning is really the most important part here. Like I showed you, this little PC was set at 35 watts. I want to take it up to 65. I know that this UM790 can definitely handle it with the cooling system and power supply I have. Again, hovering over this little icon here will give us some information about what we're about to change. We've got the STAPM power limit, slow power limit, slow boost duration, fast power limit, and our fast boost duration. When it comes to these durations, I usually just go ahead and max them out so we can stay up there as long as possible. But if I'm going to set the TDP the same across the board here with all three of these, it really doesn't matter. Still, I usually go on up there. We're gonna start out here, and I'm gonna take this up to 65. You might wanna experiment with a little lower. Our slow power limit, also, we'll just do 65. Slow boost duration, fast power limit, and our fast boost duration. So right now, we have not applied this setting just yet because we've got a little more that we can work with down here. APU VRM tuning. This can limit the amperage going to our board in our mini PC or our handheld. Sometimes I do mess around with this only when I go over 65 watts. Most of the time I leave the VRM tuning stock, just where it is out of the box with whatever device I'm using. APU iGPU tuning. This is great for setting a static iGPU clock. And this really does help out with the new Ryzen 6000 and 7000 APUs, especially with emulation. And there's some games that really do benefit from this, but I've noticed more than not with the newer AAA games, it does hurt performance rather than help it out. Couple examples for the static iGPU clock, Spider-Man, Miles Morales, or Spider-Man Remastered. Usually I go to around 1900 to 2000 with those games and lock that iGPU where it sits. And I do get much better performance like that, but for something like Cyberpunk, if I was to set it there, it just kind of falls right on its face. It's a little odd, so I kind of let the power management system do its own thing with that iGPU clock. Radeon graphics options, anti-lag, Radeon boost. I usually just use the Adrenaline software to get this up and going. We've also got an AMD precision boost override, curve optimizer, per core curve optimizer, and AMD boost profile. I'm gonna to go to performance here. And before I apply my settings here, I usually set up a preset. So right up here in the top right hand corner, we can name this whatever we want. I'm just gonna go with 65. I'm gonna save. Our preset is saved. And now we can actually apply that preset right here. So apply current settings. My preset is now good to go. And this PC is actually running at 65 watts now instead of 35. Another thing to note is from the settings, we also have an auto reapply. With some HPs and Lenovo's, I've noticed that I do need this auto reapply on. Out of the box, it's set to three seconds and it seems to be good enough. 
So we've just set up a custom power profile, but we also have adaptive and auto when it comes to the new universal x86 tuning utility. Adaptive is actually pretty cool because we can set this up per application. So for instance, if you're running an indie game, you can actually set this up at a lower TDP. And once that game starts up, it'll detect it and it'll automatically go to that lower TDP. If you want to run Cyberpunk full boat, you can set it up at full boat. From basic adaptive mode, we've got our max temperature limit, which is going to be 95. Max power limit, which is set up to 90 for some reason right now. We can go to 65 with this. We've also got a max curve optimizer. This controls the max negative curve optimizer limit in adaptive mode. Usually I have this off, but uh, with the adaptive mode, it's going to constantly monitor that max temperature limit, which is 95 degrees Celsius. And as long as we're under 95 degrees Celsius, it's going to try its hardest to get us up to 65 watts if it needs it during gameplay. This is really great for setting up specific game profiles. We've also got that Turbo Boost Override iGPU setting. Maximum iGPU clock. On this one, it is 2800. We've got our minimum and our minimum CPU clock limit. For indie games, we can definitely take the maximum iGPU clock down with this one, set the minimum even lower if we need to. And we also have the Radeon graphics options. Again, anti-lag, Radeon boost, and image sharpening. And the final awesome new addition to this software is auto. Preset on battery charge, so when we're plugged in, when it detects that we do have power connected to whatever device we have going, we can use the drop down here, choose one of the built-in presets, or we can use one of our own custom. So we've got three sections here that we can go through. Preset on battery discharge, so we'd be on battery with this. You might want lower wattage if you're on a handheld. And preset on system resume. So this is really great for just kind of tweaking and tuning your favorite settings here. But personally, I usually just go with custom, especially with these mini PCs, given that I don't need to worry about battery or anything like that. Now I wanted to give you a little rundown on how to test that custom TDP just to make sure it took. And for this, I do use a couple different applications. First up is going to be hardware info. This is really great. And once you install it, it's going to come up with a little menu like this. Choose sensors only. It's going to bring it up. And from here, we can monitor our full system. SSD temps, core voltages, everything you need to know about your system is listed here. But the main thing we want to look for is CPU package power. We're just going to double click. It's going to bring up a graph for us. Now, in order to stress this CPU out, I'm going to open up CPU Z. We can actually go to the benchmark section here and run a stress test on that CPU. So from bench, we've got bench and stress. As soon as I hit this, it's going to max out all eight cores because we've got an eight core CPU here. In turn, that CPU is going to pull as much wattage as it can. As you see from here, we jumped up to 64, 65 watts. So, we went from 35 to 65 on this mini PC. If you've got a device with a substantial cooling system and power supply, there's a little more that we can actually throw at this. Now, if I was to set the TDP on this at 80 watts, this CPU alone can't hit 80 watts, but along with the GPU it can. And that's where GPU-Z comes in. So we're still running that stress test on the CPU, as you can see here. From GPU-Z, we can also put a load on the iGPU. And remember, we need to split that 65 watts up between the iGPU and the CPU here. So if I was running at, let's say, 80 watts, I would need to go ahead and run this also, just to make sure that our total package power was going up to that 80 watt TDP limit. But we're at 65 now, and I think that's plenty for this little mini PC. And of course, the whole reason you want to do this is to get better performance out of your device. So I want to show you the difference between 35 watts and 65 watts on this mini PC. First up, we've got Geekbench 6 at 35 watts, single core 2,109, multi 10,641. Not bad at all for a mobile chip by any means, but taking it up to 65, we see around a 24% increase in single core, going up to 2698, and an 18% increase in multi core, going up to 12,818. Moving over to 3D Mark Time Spy at 35 watts, we scored a pretty impressive 2,935, and at 65 watts, we're up to 3,292. 
Taking a look at the graph here between 35 and 65, you can see we've got those clocks nice and steady on the CPU and GPU at 65, and they're really all over the place at 35. I also wanted to run a couple gaming benchmarks. So here we have Horizon Zero Dawn, where at 1080p medium settings, and at 65 watts, we had an average of 86 FPS, a minimum of 33, and a maximum of 175. At 35 watts, an average of 76, minimum of 29, and a maximum of 175. I've always said this game is very well optimized for these APUs, so we only gain 10 FPS, which doesn't sound like much when you're talking about, you know, a dedicated GPU, but on an iGPU, that's a significant gain. Now, some games might be less, some games might be more, like Cyberpunk 2077. Also, ran the built-in benchmark with this one. 1080p low settings, 65 watts, 75 FPS on average. At 35, we got an average of 62 FPS. So we gained around 13 FPS with Cyberpunk 2077. And of course, with these iGPUs, every little bit helps. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. I really appreciate you watching. If you do test out this universal x86 tuning utility, let me know in the comments below what settings you're using on what APU. Again, it also works with Intel, so if you're working with an Intel chip, you can do it there. And it works with desktops. It doesn't have to be a mobile chip. If you don't want to get into the BIOS, you can definitely do a little bit of TDP overclocking on your main desktop PC. I will leave links to the tuning utility and all of the other tools that we used in this video. If you've got any questions, let us know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.